Hey, welcome back. Uh, we're, um, we're doing something very different today. We have, um, we have a Michael on the line, and Michael's going to be, his face is going to be with us in just a few seconds. And he's going to present his question or his discussion point uh, or a couple points related to uh, self-teaching, as you can see in the title of this program. And I'm going to do my very best to address that. I do have a handful, maybe 20 or so items that we can bring up if, uh, as as I find myself either running dry or or or, or, or fully, you know, really challenged. But this is um, this is for all of you who um, are trying to teach yourselves. And I believe me, I am not that guy who thinks this is a great idea to teach yourself. And I mean, one of the reasons I say one of the things that's true about saying that is anybody who's actually teaching in his own natural yay. You not only know the advantages, but you're in a position of being compromised, shall we say. You don't want to tell people they can teach themselves. On the, on the other hand, I'm actually learning whether or not people can all the time. I'm very surprised and sometimes impressed with young people coming in and having, without any um, background, and actually beginning to move. Um, so we're going to just talk about several of the points related to this. And I'm going to let uh, Michael come on now and just, oh, well, before I do, actually, let me just look at our um, our donors. I want to just do that first. Benjamin C., Stephen J., David D., I want to thank you very much for your recurring donations. They seem to come in together. It's a great bunch that you guys make for us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let... Um, I'm going to let Michael talk to you, and then I'm going to show his question at some point in this thing. I'm going to let his question sit up there for you, um, or his his emailed one to me. I'll, I'll I'll make sure it's available for you to pause and look at whenever you feel like. But right now, I'm just going to let him uh, tell us what he's thinking about, which he said he's been thinking about for a while. Michael has uh, been painting. He said for about a year. He started in the middle of this COVID stuff. When I take it, you were sort of locked down, hey, Michael. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, as I was telling you, I really started to enjoy painting. Right. And when I first started painting, you know, you just start, you don't mind, you just, uh, you don't care how it looks. But after a while, you start to care. <laughs> Good and, point. Uh, yeah. And, you know, so I start would see this book or somebody would recommend that book or this video. And, you know, after a couple of months, I got a stack of books and videos and I'm staring at them and I'm confused and overwhelmed. I don't even know where to start. And a guy like I'm, me isn't helping you at all because I stand here and say my way is better than their way. <laughs> or I, at least I, I, that's what you're dealing with. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of contradicting viewpoints out there. Uh, you know, one will say mass in the other says, you know, contour lines. And right. so it's it's very difficult to try to teach yourself. So what have you and, been doing? Just to give us a back, been, background. I mean, what have you? How have you well, been approaching painting? Let me just put it that way. So uh, I've been approaching painting. I, you know, I did master copies. I would copy uh, Monet's, and I will, you know, I really like Monet, and attempt to copy Sargent's. I find a lot of odd angles that Sargent gets are very difficult to get, uh, which is what made me want to start learning how to draw because I figured that was a drawing issue. <laughs> and, when you say um, odd angles, how do you mean that? Like some of his noses and his charcoal portraits, the, the nose has an odd angle to it, and I cannot produce that angle. <laughs> and it's on more than one of his uh, paintings. He has some difficult angles to draw. Yeah. Have you read, and, have you read his work? Uh, that is to say the, the Charterist book, for example, and other... I book? read excerpts from it. I actually ordered that book, and I'm yeah. waiting for that one to come now, too, so I can read yeah. it. Because that one actually has an exp explanation where he says, I'm not drawing noses. You understand that? And that would be no. the beginning of your education <laughs> if you're an impressionist. Well, now he's just drawing what he sees. He's drawing shapes and things like that. So, mm. uh, so your concern about it, the way a nose points and that sort of thing uh, right. is, a, is one of those concerns that comes with the territory um, that most people presume is so. And that is, we are drawing a nose. We are drawing a head. <laughs> and uh, of course, I'm coming from the impressionist model where we're, we're drawing an impression. We're drawing the events visual that happen and organize. It's just sort of an organizing problem. And that's what he would tell you exactly that. So when you're copying him, consider that you might actually be able to benefit by, but you might find yourself improving with that little bit, teeny bit of knowledge. Anyway, keep that's, talking that's about what you're, answer. yeah, yeah. Keep bringing that. What do you, what's your issue today? 
Is it just the confusion about so well, many ways? Well, it's it's more that I want to I want to learn how to put forth a effective plan of study for myself. Okay. You know, should I concentrate on one thing? Should I spend time just drawing, right. or should I draw two hours a day and then paint an hour? Right, what yes. should I draw? What should yeah. I paint yeah. to reinforce the fundamentals? That's what I care about. Yeah. I don't really care about style or anything like that. I just want to learn the fundamentals. And I kind of feel like how my signature, you could tell it from anybody else's. Right. I feel like if I the fundamentals down, that my own brand of painting or drawing will just come through the way my signature well, did. Good, good. That is, and that's that's true enough. So, so you're, but you're trying to do this in a self-taught model. You're trying to yeah, stand at home. Really and, option, well, yeah. self-taught. I mean, it's not self-taught if you're getting information from outside. But on the other hand, you're not there right. in a room with somebody who can look at you and say, "What are you thinking?" You know. Right. And uh, no, no, no. It's not like that. It's like this. You know. That, that and, terrifies me. Yeah. You know that that I could waste my time and develop bad habits because I don't have somebody like you saying, "Whoa, what are you doing?" Yeah. And so you know, that's, I know that's a possibility that I could develop some bad habits. Yeah. Well. So that's one point. Uh, you made a couple others. I, I'm just, uh, if you, uh, do you want to cover a couple other ones before I go sure. to a list? Sure. Get get yes. get the several that you're out there. And not to go and don't change the subject. Let's not go into uh, <laughs> draftsmanship. <laughs> just stay on this subject. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I, I think my my main overall point was that I wanted to be able to plan my own education. Right. Uh, as far as drawing and painting is concerned. Right. And that, I, you know, because I'm not an expert, I have no idea where to even start. Right. So doing and it self-education, you want to know how to plan right. it, how to create it. You use the word curriculum in what you commented in your comments. Correct. An effective yeah. curriculum, like okay. a structured a, a structured way to study that I can work on the fundamentals. Right. And, you know, know I, at least know I'm heading towards progress. Right. You know, so I know I come home today and I'll, draw for a couple of hours, then I'll paint for an hour, but you know, I don't know what to draw on or what's paint. Should I work on a hand? Mm -hmm. Should I work on the whole arm? Yeah. I, I'm chiefly concerned with the human head, the human figure and landscapes. And, you know, so basically being able to draw anything. Well, you said uh, that you were interested in a la prima painting. So you're in yes. one sense talking to the right guy. We aren't, we aren't, Glaze masters here, or any of those things. So, <laughs> so in that way, you're talking to the right guy. Well, uh, I like your work. That's why I initially was watching your videos, and I contacted you. Yeah. Well, you I, I like you've already you've already answered the first question that I would the first point I would make about all this stuff. You know, you're trying to ask the question about who to listen to. You know right. what the first point is? <laughs> Find out who you like. Their work Indeed, and their students' work. If you don't like that, don't go listening. Don't turn any of their videos on. Don't do anything. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Make sure you're at first base with that. And that's the advice, by the way, to you out there. That's the general advice I give. Well, uh, my two favorite you, guys are Sargent and Monet. Uh, yeah. I love those guys. Well, that's a thing, right? But that's those guys. You're, you're right. stuck with us. <laughs> you're stuck with well, the world you have in front of you. You know what I mean? They can't give us advice time. anymore. <laughs> Your style is kind of that way, though. Well, fair enough. Our approach is definitely of the same ilk. There's no question yeah. about that. So to that that extent, but make sure that that's why I say even students come to my studio. I say, look, if, do you like my work? Because if you don't like my work, go away. I don't, <laughs> I don't want you to study here because I don't want to fight with you. I want you to be saying, look, I respect you. I, I I'm trying to 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 I'm I'm all in to figure out what you're doing. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Teach me, but teach me the way I want to be taught. <laughs> you can't, that, that's right. You can't, you can't do that. Yeah. So yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. I'll keep going a little bit further if you like. You made a couple other points and let's just get them all out there a little bit. And I can refer to your quote list at some point here. And in let's fact, see. if I can get Mr. Producer no. not to put this up, I will look at your list right now, but I'm not going to put it up for everybody yet because it'll confuse people, but I'm going to look at it. Okay. I'm following you now. I'm just I'm just uh, taking a quick look here. Yep. Yep. Take your time. Hmm. Well, this was a good point. Uh, I said I, I would hate to spend five years drawing and painting to find out I had badly misused that time. Yeah. And yeah. could have got much further along if I had known a better way. Well, that's why we switch teachers too. You know what I mean? You realize mm. you've gotten that piece and it's not getting you to the to the values. 
So one of the points I make out there is, can you figure out what your values are in painting? Not it's one thing is the paintings, the painters you like, the kind of painting you like, but the idea of the quality of the work, you know, and that's where I try to get people to walk around through the entire history of painting, be at the museums all you can and find out what it is that makes you even want to do this visually. You know, why, you know, who are the guys that keep you wanting to be in this game? There's always going to be some body, right? Like you say, Monet and Sargent. Absolutely. So that's, that's when a, I, yeah, yeah. When, when I walked into the Clark Museum, Yep. And I seen those Monets up close and personal. <laughs> that's what I knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, it is unbelievable. They must have a pretty good collection. I've forgotten that collection in New York. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, they have a well, that one. Yeah. They have, they have Sergeant's portrait that he did of Duran there. Yes. And it's huge. Yeah, that's yeah. That's amazing. That's life size. Yeah. Well, that's a very <laughs> good example, though, of, of just just very right teaching. You know, he yeah. got he got the lessons of uh of carolus duran and it's one of those things you know when you're working with somebody you drop what you think you know about any or what you've heard somewhere else and don't let your don't put yourself in the position of of trying to to correct your teachers you just want to take in what they have drop everything you heard from this last guy and just try to drink in this other guy and sergeant is clearly drunk in and he just looks like he's a carolus duran <laughs> yeah, he's got oh, it. He's, he's solid. They he got really it down. Those lessons, well, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. He's like he to me. Sergeant's an example of what happens when you have a talent. It's and it's uh, you know really worked on from an early age, and then yeah, yeah. he has the package. He's just yeah to me amazing. No, he's and and the comment he makes about this is you want to actually train yourself so that you can think about more important things when you're painting. So you, the, the disciplines that I'm talking about, you know, the visual disciplines, the discipline of, like he talks about points and angles. And if you don't have a yeah. discipline of relating things in a planar world, if you don't have a, 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 if you're not disciplined to do that every time to get the points right in relation to other points, right, yeah. that sort of thing. But he's, but that's one of those things that you want to read his book and other, his other quotes. There's several good sources, but the Charteris one is the one that's got the Probably the most insightful ones. Or the well, certainly I, I best heard one you place. mention it, and that's why I, I ordered it. Yeah, yeah. Is that, <laughs> and that I'm excited for that? Is that online in a free way? It should be free. That's an old book. Uh, no, I didn't find it for free. Mm -hmm. I ordered it for I think it was like twenty eight bucks. I found it on eBay for twenty eight bucks. Was the cheapest one. That's a good price. That's okay. Yeah. Um. So. Um, Go further. Go sit, do a little more with your conversation here, and and I'll just I'll just react to you a little bit, and uh, I'll come okay. back to some of your original points, because I've so, separated some of them out with a line, a list, a list for you for us to talk about together. But I won't do that to you right now. So keep going. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So what I really like to learn is, uh, you know, how to draw. Uh, the excuse me, the drawing fundamentals, but mm -hmm. I want to be able to do it where you know I can plan my week. So, okay. you know, I'm going to come home and I know, okay, I'm going to draw for X amount of time and right. paint for X amount of time. And I'm going to draw this and I'm going to paint this mm -hmm. and, you know, it'll lead to progress. So, but as I said, I don't know what to, what practice to even do. I don't well, know what will I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, it doesn't a lot matter what you draw. What matters is whether you use good lighting. If you don't know how to do that, that's one of the things you'd pick up from a teacher in a minute. To just okay. light, just just light your whatever you're drawing with a light that you can control. I have a single light source, for example. And when okay, you set it up, like that, but I didn't know that. yeah. Well, do look at my videos that talk about the setup uh, okay. of a cast. Maybe I forget what the. And I apologize for never knowing that. I just don't keep track of oh, my that's okay. You videos. have so many elements. I know. <laughs> somebody, somebody wisely online here, and thank you, whoever it was, uh, said I need to go ahead and turn this into a um, like an index, so it's yeah. easier to find them at, or collate them or something. And it's true, I, I should. I think you should do an, an online atelier. <laughs> I think I, I think I'm there with you. We, we may, we may have started something here. Uh, mean, I'm not averse to that. Piece. If this can actually work, I'm not averse to it. I and I only say that in this way, and that I, my son is in film, and he, he. Um, he pays attention to those guys who say don't go to school and there's there's some there's some good reasons not to go to schools right in all sorts of ways lots some of it if you go to colleges is a complete waste of your time if you uh, have a game plan and you know exactly what you want to do then school's great if yeah, you don't that yeah. is a waste of time well that's exactly what i told my daughter who just graduated yeah. from college i said if you want if you want to go to college you got to talk to me about what your reason is i gotta have a reason <laughs> 
absolutely. And so as her daughter, her, as her friends were coming home with their degrees and absolutely no idea what they just did, you know, and <laughs> and, and no better yeah. future as far as they could tell. So, but that, um, but that's that thing. Okay, so uh, the lighting. So go and look at those videos. But the lighting needs to be simple and it needs to be expressive. It needs to be fun to look at the shapes. Do you see what I mean? Okay. Now, if so you have to use that. artificial light, which I'm hoping you don't, but if you have to use artificial light, don't have north or west or east light. In the morning, you can use um, west light. In the evening, you can use uh, uh, east light. Do you follow that? You're saying when I set up a still life, I, I should light it in a particular way. Well, single light source. And you should single have the same source. light on your object, on your objects as you have on your canvas. You want to be in the same colored light, right? You understand that okay. idea of warm light. I get that, yes. But if you can do it in natural light, just use the window, uh, you know, but you can't have a window where there's daylight smacking off buildings and then <laughs> changing, you know, and the lights will move across the screen in front of you. Do you follow that? That makes sense. That does make sense, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's, a, that's the biggest part of this, but you set it up so that it has, so that the light on the face, and I wish I could see my face right now, which I really can't do, but... Uh, say say something like maybe I can see my hand here. You wear the patterns on the fingers, the dark and lights, so they make interesting shapes and they make interesting patterns. Yeah. You see, as I turn my hand, it does different things. And you're looking for this to be the most interesting you can get, right? This is our game, right? Yes. <laughs> so and but the single light source, not much, you, you forget about any double light sources. You're not ready for anything like that uh, until you actually get the idea of impressionism, which at what point you can paint 50 light sources on, <laughs> if, you, if you wanted to, because you're, you know how to discipline your brain and your eyes. But so a single light source, keep it the same every time, paint from exactly the same spot on the floor, <laughs> your eye exactly the same place every time. <laughs> These basic things will kill you if you don't do it. This is that where, the, where if your studio behaviors will eat your lunch. Yeah, Benson well, that makes about, sense. Yeah. I get that, because if you're off a fraction of a second, I'm a carpenter, so I know if you measure something a sixteenth off, right. by the end of the wall, it's like a foot <laughs> off. That's exactly what we're talking about. That's good it stuff. Makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, how, would you, how would you say to go about to start learning how to draw? Well, if I, really I would to, you know, the first thing I would The first thing I would tell you to do is do what comes naturally. What, you, okay. what I'm trying to correct if I'm a teacher is what you do naturally because then I have less correcting to do usually. Now, you can have people who are, their heads are so full of crap they've gotten from other places that are, you know, just like the idea of construction drawing. If your head is full of that stuff, that it wouldn't be something that came natural to you. You would not have been thought to do. You, you would have, if you saw something naturally, you would have drawn the shape of my ear, you know, the shape of the head. You would have drawn that. That's what you would have drawn. I, I tried the Loomis head and yeah. I could draw them, but I don't like them. No, who I wants like to better. have a manufactured head? That's a perfectly good thing for for illustration. And if you have to make figures up out of your head and all that stuff, but why would you mm. do that? The whole, but that's where I want you to look at the masters and look at the drawings of all the people of all times, right? And see what people are generally coming coming to terms with or dis, are deciding to do. And right. you'll find what they do is draw what they see. This construction drawing ain't that, right? So. It's a yeah. natural thing. I expect you when you sit down there, your your brain will start drawing a shape that you see. That, that's exactly what I do too, just naturally. Follow your instincts. Like you say, yeah. there's people that are telling you to go against that instinct. And, no. no, I'm yeah. a, I'm going to assure you that I, I I I didn't have any. I mean, I would have had those instincts. I got to the art students league and they were trying, and we just spent a year doing construction drawing, and it was the most useless thing. Because I was looking at these great academic drawings from the 19th century, and I'm saying, I actually went to the register and I said, where, where, do, the, where do we do this? Where do we learn to do this? Because we couldn't do this. They'd give you the maximum maybe a half hour to draw an entire figure. I mean, like a complete waste. Oh, you can't study the figure. You can't study drawing in those sorts of circles. In, but, in but, your opinion, yeah. what, what's, like, what's something, a good way to start learning fundamentals? Well, what are the fundamentals? So, well, you can look online. There are a lot of people who will tell you what are the what is the nature of light. You know what I mean? So you're talking the about the shadow, the line of shadow, the Da Vinci thing. And Da Vinci is a yeah. good place to start. But under, it's nothing wrong with understanding the world visual. That is to say the light on an object. Right. So do that. Read those things. But still just draw shapes. <laughs> um yeah, some That's things right. like the flatness of shadows, you know, the shadow line and the obscure and the clear and the form on one side and the and the atmosphere on the other side. These things are better shown you. Do you know what I'm saying? Than talked about. 
Yeah. How flat is the shadow? Flat as a hat? No, flatter than that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, excellent, yeah. So, uh, but that's the first thing. And just learn how to handle putting out note, putting out shape, and playing it off of other shape. And just watching it into correction, you know, and learn the mentality of a backstraggler. But the, before you do that, make sure you decide on some parameters. Say, I'm going to make the top of something called the head. I'm going to make it right here. I'm going to make the chin right here. And they ain't moving. That's so right. fundamental. If you don't do that, things go sideways so fast. If right. everything is in motion, you just wind up being in the wind. Do you see what I'm saying? So if you can yes. do that from the beginning, make sure you do that every time. So that doesn't tell you what to do when you get home and that sort of thing. And I don't think I need to tell you that, actually. Whatever you have time for, put in. But I will suggest that you don't just knock off something and then pick up a new one and knock off something tomorrow. I suggest the idea of studies. Put more time. I didn't know that, but put, that's good yeah, to know that. Yeah, so put time into them until, you, until it starts falling apart. I have a guy who works with me online right now, and he was written one of the intensives this summer. Uh, how, <laughs> how you doing, Evan? <laughs> and... and and, and who's talking that way, that he's, he's trying to push these things, but he's realizing he's starting to push them into dark holes and getting worse. Well, that's how you do it. You need to start pushing your paintings till they, till they start failing. And you start realizing where, realizing where your, your uh, next level of information is, is needed. You know well, what I mean? One of the problems I have with painting is I'll do like a blocking. Right. And then the painting looks like complete to me. And I don't really know where to go from that. Right. Like I have a painting right here. Where I, I blocked it in, and then I didn't do nothing else after because I, I wasn't really sure where to go. I mean, it's not the greatest painting in the world. But... No, it's okay. We'll look at anything you can show. Tilt it back a little bit so we get more light on it. Yeah, and so, so yeah, so it doesn't. But, this part doesn't make any difference. What you have to do is look at what you have there, right, and just start correcting it to the other parts you already have there. If you're looking at a width, correct it to the to the height. Do you know what I mean? Cor yeah. Correct it relationally. Just start correcting it. If you've got a color there and it's not the right color, or if you have a form and it doesn't making the, the if the form movement's wrong, you just go, go ahead and correct what's already there. Just don't start and adding I, more stuff to it. Correct what's already for, there. Yeah. As for paint application though too. Yeah. You know, once I had the shadows and then like, to me this, this painting needed another layer of paint, but I wasn't quite sure how to go about it. Well, yeah, I understand that. I, my, my suggestion about that stuff related to painting is put your time into drawing. Make that your first goal for a, for a year. Make that your that's first... What I've been, yeah. That's what I've been doing for about three months now. Good, good. Drawing. I, I haven't painted in two, about two months because I've been drawing every second. No, that's where you want to sit. Just sit there. It's all, the, all you're doing in drawing is you're managing values. And if you look at my videos where I suggest people do values, brown paper drawings... Yeah. This, you see some of these online where people are doing realism on brown paper. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for you right. to understand the visual order and the major values and the value relationships and what happens where what they meet. What is that? The visual order? What, I, I hear you talking about that, but I don't know what it is. Well, it's just the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the way things come to your eye. Some things come quick and strong, and, if you, and, and other things you, can't, you have to go hunting for. It. You have to look hard. It's high contrast versus low contrast. If you were looking at yourself, can you see yourself on the screen there? Do you, yes. see, do you see the, 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 the what, what for us is the left side of your neck? Do you see how bright that is? In, yes. in visual order, that's one of your leading effects. The other side. Okay. The other side. <laughs> Around along oh, yeah. the neck. I'm, on your, on your, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, that could be. But you might be saying that. But you see the silhouette, that dark on the shadow side and that bright wall that's behind right. you. That's a powerful effect. So if you, if you start blurring your eyes down, and I'm talking about that squinting down, <laughs> yeah. letting your eyes just get darker and darker, you'll see that that's a very leading effect. A little piece of something on your shirt, maybe the highlight on your forehead, that sort of, or the line up the up to, up the paper behind you on the wall where the papers meet each other, or yeah. whatever those are. So you see what I'm saying? The visual order yeah. just is the order in which those things come to your eye, and you can easily see which is first by blurring your eyes down, really darkening your eyes. If you darken them enough, you'll only be able to see two or three effects, two and or three spots of before contrast. Before yeah, that's that's the order of power. That's how you establish values. That's one of the parts of establishing values. So have that in mind, right? And all those, of course, when you're drawing, need to be in the right place on the page. That's an assumption, right? That's just presumed to always be the case. Yes. But, but what, I used to, what I found with myself is, uh, is that when I was trying to find a first this, then that model, if you're an impressionist, the first this, then that is not do the head and then the background. 
It's do the leading effects and then do the secondary effects. And the model, and the reason that partly comes from the, the principle of coming out of the fog, this is expressly a Boston School thing, paint as if you're coming out of a fog. By the way, we were talking about the, uh, the visual order there for a second. I want you to mention, I'm seeing this image of you right now, and I'm saying what I'm seeing is that you, this brightness on your forehead, I can see yeah. why you would pick that. But what I would ask you to do is blur your eyes way, way, way down and notice if, you, if that's still the one you stay with as maybe the first one in the visual order. Just maybe the one in my nose. That's exactly what I'm telling you. So that's sort of the, what we're talking about. And these things are very specific. They're not a thing that you're sort of random about. The look of nature is the look of nature. And the relatedness of effects is one of the drivers of values. So where a dark, dark meets a light, light, and they have a sharp edge, that's a power point, like on your neck. That's a very powerful yeah. spot. But the one on their nose, it's a soft edge, but it's so bright, and the shadows are so dark, that you're getting a similar kind of a power effect. Now, if you blur your eyes between the two, I think you'll see the sharp edge comes first. It comes to your eye more. The more you blur down, the more that one stays there. The nose yeah. will tend to disappear. That's the difference between a contrast plus edge and a contrast with a soft edge. You know what I mean? I'm one of the sharp edge. Yes. So do you see what I'm doing, though? I'm just trying to say, look, when you're, what you're doing is you're making paintings and values. You're just making, you're going to be making paintings. So get over the idea you're doing drawings in the sense that I just talked about a week or so ago with what we're doing when I talk about the draftsman. That's the drawing with a, pen, with a point or the isolation of a figure. That's not the same thing as what we mean by drawing when you start talking about uh, a drawing of, for example, a still life. So when you're setting up a still life, you should be able to, if you can set it up so the values are, are a pleasure to look at, the interplay of darks and lights, and the patterns they make and all that stuff. If you can make that interesting, and as Gamma would say, it's only as interesting as this, the painting is only going to be as interesting as your setup. <laughs> so if you could, but if yeah. you can make that interesting, that primarily it's interesting in values. It's the values that drive that stuff. Now you can tell, I mean, I can tell you from across the room, if it's beautiful in color, that's going to be a big deal. But in the drawing portion of this thing, it's all values. All we're talking about is what happens with values. And so you okay. can make value studies of still lives value studies of chaos. Uh, you can also do just line studies to study line relationships. Do you see what I'm saying? And that what's, drafts what's that? like way. Well, it's just what's a shape. That? You see, I have a shape going around the side of my head here. Well, mm -hmm. and as it picks up the beard or it picks up my other shoulder, you can see the other shoulder. That one, Paul, there you go. <laughs> you can see that there are relationships between these shapes. So that's just yeah. linear, that's shape talking to shape. And you can think about those things without the values involved. Like where the horizontal intersects the vertical. That sort of thing, anything like that, yeah. Okay. But Or just the shape of the shoulder and how it looks in relation to the shape of the hair or the beard or any of those things. That's shape play, which can be described in that convention of line, right? If you're not massing to get yeah. it, don't feel obliged to mass. Study line in its own right, shape in its own right. I've, I've been doing a lot of line Yeah. That with, with drawing. Right. I do more messing when I paint, but I've been drawing a lot with charcoal, and I usually do lay out contour lines right. before I, you know. Yep. Well, so my recommendation, and this is, by the way, not me answering the, the, the question generically, since I've already right. seen that you're interested in the way we think. I'm trying to be Absolutely. a little more specific for you. But that is, if you can also approach this from, because that, what line does is it teach you to see heights to widths to get the tilt right of a shape, you know, to get what we call the gesture. Right. You know, those things are huge. They're huge. And do it in line. That's where you can go through two or three until you start, are, until you start becoming more glib. To describe Sargent as glib would be an understatement. To, to, to rather be more glib and just getting a proportion right and a gesture at the same time. And, of course, getting the bump count, right. which is what we call the shape, you know, the whole bump count thing there, uh, to get those all doing that for you, you know, to doing it with that. Do it, getting the gesture yeah. proportions with the shape itself. Uh, that's a thing you can just do with line. And the exploration of line is a huge thing. People don't realize how much f form is in what happens along the edge. You know, if I'm holding... I, I, yeah, you follow that's me? That's like one of my favorite things to draw is like silhouettes. Right, like, to get that I'll fullness of the form upon the contour. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, I just sit there and my wife will be sitting sideways and I'll just make likenesses of her... Her silhouette. Just study the just study the shapes. Study the shapes. She isn't. It isn't yeah. your wife. It's shape. <laughs> I do try to remember that. You know, paint shapes, not things. Yeah. Sometimes it gets a little hard to remember, but. Well, you get to... into it, and you start. Your pride starts getting involved. 
And what, yeah. you, what you're looking for is the end game. The end game is the beauty of the relationships. That's where the beauty comes from. Even your wife, she's, she's only as beautiful as, sometimes as the clothes she wears, right? So, <laughs> so if she wears the wrong color clothes, she can look pretty tragic. You know, I mean, I, and she'd probably, you're more likely to do that than her, but <laughs> my dad used to, my dad used to wear these blues that were just made him look sick as a dog. And he always looked like he had a liver problem and he never did. Didn't even drink. My father's the worst dresser in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but those are the kinds of things we're talking about. So it's the relationships yeah. of these lines. So just enjoy that. But be, well, be, but be articulate about it. Don't be generic. Don't be around doing sloppy junk, like, like gesture drawing. I mean, in that sloppy no, I, way. I don't find I spend, articulate I, expression. Yeah. If I spend my time on something, I like to spend my time on it. That's another thing I love about painting. Yeah. You can really take your time and, you know, get refine it right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've yeah. done a painting that went past the day. Everything I do, uh, I'll paint in one day, though. Yeah. So yeah. I don't even know how to go about that. Right. That's another art the idea of staying in a game, staying in the game for as long as it takes. Yeah. To, to make sure yeah. you maintain the surface quality and that sort of thing. Um, yeah. I could confuse you with this guy, Josh. I was just talking to him about, could he, could he just go through that painting and draw with the darks? The lights were excessively thick. Could you just go through that painting and just draw with your darks? You'll stop using such thick lights because it's impossible to draw with your darks. And that's a fundamental of, of, of wet and wet painting is, is that you draw with the darks, you know, not exclusively, but that's a fundamental in your thinking. But I'm not trying to give you that as much as I'm trying to suggest that what you're really asking for is, is what to do. And the thing to do is get confidence in your drawing. And drawing is the is the spatial, it's not the color, <laughs> but it's also the values. There's also the values. It it doesn't have to be the values. It has to be the value of relationships, though. So you don't have to go and say, "Here's my dark. It's this dark, and I can make it match that." And I'm matching the light. None of that side side stuff. It's just that if this is the dark and that's the light, can you get all the relationships right? The land in between. Can you get all the other values? You know. So you're studying. Remember when you become a student of drawing, you're studying what's in front of you. You're studying light. You're studying drawing and the problem of drawing. You're studying your own bizarre inclinations and good ones. <laughs> You're studying yourself, in other words. So yeah. you need to just maintain your sort of self-consciousness. I don't mean self-consciousness in the worst way, but the awareness. Stay aware. What you know. Well, I've, be, I've yeah. become much more observant since yeah. I started drawing. Yeah. You know, I, I'm yeah. starting to notice all things about like people, like how their eyebrows go. Or right. Right. Stuff I never <laughs> paid attention to before. My, you know, my wife was like, "Did you see how big her nose was?" And I was like, "No, I, I didn't." But now I do. Now I'll be like, "Did you see how big her nose was?" And, and it's from drawing. But uh, another question I actually had was uh, the training of the eye. So how do you train your eye to become more accurate? You know, well, is, is it just just drawing, or is there a system no? Well. That? The training, the training we're talking about, the way when we talk about training the eye, has to do uh, primarily with teaching people to see relationally. But you know, okay. but the training, but the training. I mean, that's why you need somebody to be, to correct you, because what's right. training? So it's like being with a trainer. You know? Yes. <laughs> you know, you could well, be thinking I, you're making your leg your your leg muscles better, but you might be actually causing an injury. <laughs> yeah. I, I know that. I know without <laughs> an expert like you pointing out my mistakes that there is a high uh, chance that things won't go perfectly right, well. Right. But I am willing to still try. Yeah. Well, yeah. They, what, what's behind all this is that idea of what's called seeing, learning to see. Right. So training the eye, um, is that the same thing? I would put learning to see in its place. What learning to see is, is learning to see relationships. And that's every every painter who's ever talked about painting will talk about learning to see, and they mean. Could you elaborate just a little bit more on the relationships because yeah, I don't have a full on exactly what that means. Sure, I've heard it a lot, but I'm not, you know, like the relationship. So, what what a relationship is is how wide how wide is my cheek when you're looking at this height? Do you see what I mean? Okay, that width has right. got to be right to this height. That's a relationship. I call it the box proportion or the width to height proportion. Okay. But if you said, where does my nose land between my, the last readable part of my beard and whatever reads at the top of my head, where does that land? That's a relationship. It lands at something lower than a half and you'd have to find that place. But you have to look at those two in relation to each other to see if that the upper section is bigger than the lower section and how they feel by how much. And again, feeling is the way into this kind of stuff, right? right. So that's something I guess I've kind of been doing. I just didn't yeah. know the yeah definition. That's instinctive. Most people will do that instinctively. You're trying to get yeah. stuff to look right, and oh, that's too high. 
<laughs> well, I'm a, car- I'm a carpenter, so I right. guess just, you know, th- that training just translated to drawing because that's yeah. instinctively how I started to draw was, you know, where is this compared to this? And Yeah. Well, yeah. my, my thinking is it would be so much better if there was drawing in the schools because then when you went out to carpentry, you'd already be armed. <laughs> you'd, already, <laughs> you'd already be preset to think with your eyes, you know, to use your eyes. Well, when I was in uh, high school, graffiti was big. You know, it's drawing <laughs> pretty letters. Right, right. I got pretty good at doing that. Yeah, but that's a memory but, thing. Uh, you figure out your kind of lettering and you just do it by rote memory, right? I, I did something different every time. Yeah. I like to do, yeah. yeah I never yeah. like to stick to the same thing. I won't ask much. you which which walls you did that on, so I will, I'll try to keep you out of trouble. <laughs> I, I wasn't into the walls. <laughs> oh, okay. into the part. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have friends, though. <laughs> those trains, yeah. those trains. Are not... <laughs> well, oh, man. Yeah. That guy owns a tattoo parlor now. I yeah. know, is that great? Yeah. <laughs> funny, yeah. yeah, that's very funny. No, and so, but the relationship, so what you're talking about, this world of spatial, two-dimensional, height yeah. to width, angle, point angle, that's Sargent talking in when you'll read in his book, the points, right. the point angle between angle. two points. That angle, you have to get disciplined about making sure you make that angle right to vertical. So the vertical is a god of all angles, right? I say that. So if you don't make it right, if you don't make your angle set, you know, where my shoulder over one side hits the shoulder on the other side. There's two light points over there. You can see those. If, yes. those, if the angle's not right between those two points, this drawing ain't going right. right? And by the way, mm-hmm. the beauty in a good design is in those angle relationships as much as anything else. It's not in the, in the fact that it looks like a shoulder. So discipline yourself in that way. But angles is one of them. This is all spatial, right? But now you have the other three parts to all painting, and that is, that is color, value, and, and uh, shape. The two-dimensional, you know, dis, dis, distribution on the page, how how big things are in relation to all that stuff. But values is a sort of an in and out thing, lighter and darker. What is that, left or right? No, it isn't. It isn't. It isn't. Is it? Right. So you have to say, what's my darkest dark and what's my lightest light every time you start out, and you have to set those tones and try not to change them. If you find yourself changing them, you have to revisit everything you said, just as surely as if you change the top and bottom. You'll have to revisit every proportion you made. So value relationships as well. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. Them, that's so, why it would mess me up because yeah. I'm playing everything in relation to them. Yeah. So what's happening is you're trying to do these things routinely. This is what you're trying to do every day. You're trying to do right. relationships. Set your anchoring is a fundamental thing. You set your darkest dark, say it shall be this. If your lightest light is going to be, if you're doing a white cast, you say the white of the paper. You say the lightest light is going to be right there and it's going to be that paper. I'm not putting any dirt there. And you know, th- now you have your parameters set and all the values start knowing who to be. You see what's happening? But then you have to watch them in relation to each other. So when you have a middle tone, you look at it and say, well, where do you land between the dark and the light? Are you closer to the dark or closer to the light? By the way, that's where you squint your eyes, blur your eyes. And if you blur your eyes down, you'll start seeing it with which one it joins. It'll tend to join one. It'll tend to want to be part of the lights. So that'll tell you which side it tilts of the halfway and so on. But you see what I'm doing? That's purely about relationships. Now, if okay. you, but sizes, like for example, the size of a forehead to the size of a tip of a nose or some other thing, any shape relation, any, anything that turns into a 3D mass, that's a mass relationship, right? But right. values, values is more of like, in a sense, this and that, right? There's something about values that's so different. And colors is then way different. Because now you gotta deal with chroma. How do you measure that from left to right? And it isn't a values <laughs> problem. So what yeah. is it? That's the wonderful thing about pain that'll keep you just on your toes. Right, it's the most amusing part, and so much of this is just that kind of um, intrigue, you know, and problem solving, as you say. Yeah. Color is like, you know, obviously my favorite part. <laughs> I, I can't wait to paint because I want to. So it's just drawing right. Right. Now, I'm not painting is a little tough because <laughs> I just keep thinking about the colors. I go to sleep and dream about the colors sometimes. I love the colors so much, but um, you know, that was one of the things that came to me easier was colors. Yeah. I went to Home Depot and I got like 50 of those chips and huh. I was able to like match every single one of them real quickly. <laughs> well, the game in painting, this is the relational thing per color, right? Is that you can't match half the colors in the scene in front of you. And I'm talking about if you're painting a cast, you can't match the white. You can't match right. that value. So under, if you understand that, that gets you fully into the relational game. That means that you actually have to say, I can't make this orange any more chromatic than this, and it's the most chromatic thing out there. Therefore, let us make this orange that I have in my brush, sitting there on the palette, that is that. Now, where are the rest of you guys gonna land? That's relational, wow. you see what I mean? 
Just like yeah. dark is dark and light is light. And we set things up by the most chromatic notes. That's but, a real interesting way to think about it. Yeah. So everything is anchor and then relational. Anchor and relational, right? Top and bottom is anchor, right? Dark is dark and light is right. light, anchor. Most chromatic note, anchor. So, so basically find, find things that are basically a set point yeah. and then try to plan your relations from those because they're not moving. Right. But right. if you plan from there, then it gives you a better chance of success. Well, the thing of it is, it's like an algebra problem. If you know what X is, things kind of start going okay. <laughs> you, you got an X and a Y, you better figure out what one of those is. But once you've okay. selected one, even if it's just a formula, if you select, once you select one, the other one knows what to do. You know, X equals well, two Y you know, or something. <laughs> I'm learning already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you can, and, and that's not a thing about being a mathematician. That's just, that's just logic and common sense and right. the sense of problem solving. Yeah, you find you have to now, do that. What's the, I've yeah. heard you mention memory drawing for training. Right, yes. Well, what's, what is that? Well, you need to look at the videos for that discussion, right? But oh, okay. you should do it. You should do, look at the videos and then just do memory studies. But again, my biggest thing with students, I try to get them started right away in the first, you know, early on, doing memory drawing. But the point is there's a part of your brain that's not particularly well developed that gets really, that needs to be well developed. I mean, literally the muscle will grow something in the sort of the middle of your brain. Well, uh, I forgot the name of it, but the but the whole discussion of this is worth taking some time finding a book about it, you know, and I forget what they are. There's some good books out there. Um, but they describe the, the, the studies they've done on taxi drivers in London, chess mm -hmm. players, you know, people like that, because people yeah. always assume that chess players have these great memories. What they have is these great muscles because they've developed their memory. I'm a chess player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you have yeah. something, but the visual memory and, and a huge part of chess, even that way, is visual, right? You can see the packet. Yes. And there's a that, there's a thing like that that probably will be beneficial to you. And in other trades as well, by the way, you have to see things in relation to other things by size and other things. But if you can just, what I try to get people to do is get really crisp um, silhouettes of things. I mean, real objects, but have nice silhouettes on the outside so they can have form. Right. And I want them to have form. And if, but if you have found nothing but a purely beautiful silhouette drawing, a, fo a photo of somebody in silhouette, which is not doctored or cut with a scissors, you know, so it's a really a beautiful silhouette. Yeah, yeah. And then just sit yourself down in really bright light and memorize it. And I do recommend the Kaveh method, but it's in my, you can see it in the video where I talk about how to do that. So, yeah. but it, it goes a very long way. What, when Sergeant talks about remember, you know, drawing the longest line you can remember, Right. And then he talks at some other point in a different essay. It's not in Chartist. I, I, uh, I've never heard him talk about that, but that's interesting. Oh, no. He says that specifically. And that's, of course, shows oh. that even a guy who's not drawing objects, but is drawing from effects, is having to memorize shape. And your job Incredible. is to memorize, to learn shape, and actually to learn another shape and learn what they do together. Learn it. Learn it. Right. So a big oh, piece so of memory is a big piece of that. Yeah. Yeah, so that's something I guess that helps a lot then start learning to memory. I never did it before. I never yeah. did memory drawing at all. Well, the thing that you have to do when you're set up at home in the still life is you've got to stand mm -hmm. back. Don't be standing right next to it and don't just be looking. Don't go look like this and paint over here and go like this and paint over here. Stand mm -hmm. back. So you have to remember it and walk forward and paint on it. If you're not doing that, do it, okay? Yeah, I've never done that. Oh, you got to do that. That'll develop your memory. Yeah. I'm a victim of not standing back nowhere near enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's the thing is, most people have learned from bad habits of copying photography, of just yeah. wiggling stuff around, wiggling until it starts looking plausible. They don't have to get anything in their brain. You don't have to conceive <laughs> the form. You don't have to, you know what I mean? I say yeah. that casually because, I mean, to get anywhere, you, at some point you have to do something. But, but I've seen so many people who can paint from photographs who can't paint from life, can't get, even begin to get the proportions of life, like, you know what I mean? And you know, you also I, I wonder what. Do yeah. From light. yeah, good, good. But that's in your opinion, what probably. I, so that's a question, right? How do you prove that to yourself? And that's where, if you're looking at these how-to books that I was going to put up here at the end of this thing, there's two books that are very important. Anson Cross's book, uh, I think it's called Drawing and Painting Self-Taught, and he was recommended. He was commended by a whole bunch of artists in Boston. Sergeant among them, seventy different painters, the DeCamp, Benson, all those guys. They commended this guy for the way he was teaching. Uh, and also um, uh, Amy, Amy uh, Moore, the book I've put out recently, I've talked about recently, which is the uh, science of drawing in art. Um, read these books and get the hang of what they're 
uh, what they're communicating. I will. Yeah. Um, I have to admit, I lost my point there. I apologize for that. How are we doing? You're, 52 minutes. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to maybe go for another five or 10 minutes. Sure. So that whatever we, you like. And we did lose some minutes in there, so I can go a little past that. So You're doing me a favor, Paul. So, uh, you know, whatever you need. Oh, no, I'm no. Just... We're all doing this together. We're trying to figure out what works out Absolutely. here to make everybody better painters, right? <laughs> Yes, yeah. and uh, this is just fun to be do something different too. I mean, the viewers can always use something different. So, you, uh, thank you for being here. Conversation. I, I thought I was watching one of your videos. <laughs> That's right. I, 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 would, I would forget that it was live. I, was I know. Watching a video. I know. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I'm turning into a figment for a lot of people. They walk in the room and they stand back like that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, I stopped being human. All of a sudden, I'm a thing. You know. <laughs> Well, your videos are amazing. I mean, well, yeah. Well, the information you need is already in in there mostly. It's just that I've found like a conversation like this, it flushes it out in a very different way. And that's why I wanted to get you in the rooms because you're talking about I, something I that's I'm, common to a lot of people. The idea I, of self-teaching, huge, yeah. Yeah. Um, I forgot what I was telling you about those two books and why you, you, you were them. telling me that- uh, Oh, get, I, get, I know what it is, yeah. Is that mm -hmm. they, one of them talks about the, um, the uh, phylograph, but, but what both of them do is they have students uh, have a piece of glass in front of them. And Da Vinci talks the same exact way. This comes straight from yeah. Da Vinci. And he, Da Vinci talks about fixing your head to a tree and then tracing what you see in front of you. And he's not telling really? you to do that to make a good painting. He's telling you to do that to yeah. learn to see. But Wait, what happens, what, you have a tree? piece of glass, you have a piece of glass in front of you. And this is the way people okay. figured out uh, perspective. And then you make sure you're, you close one eye and make sure the other one isn't moving. And you just trace what you see in front of you. And if you set up a chair like that, see what I was talking to you about is you're not objective about your accuracy when it comes to realist, to realist stuff. Right. It, you're interpretive, but you're too young, so to speak, in the game to interpret well enough to know. One of the things you probably don't do particularly well is, is see flat. You probably don't see the thing as if it's already two dimensional. Most people have take a long time to even realize what that even is and never mind building it in. But right. what the piece of glass does is it, it flattens this, the film, the screen out for you. And so when you close one eye and that flattens out some more, it's two eyes that make the binocular vision make you see depth, but you close one eye and you're tracing. Now, if you were to go take a piece of paper and put it on that piece of glass mm -hmm. and then make it, make, looking through the glass, make a top and bottom so you know where your lengths are going to be and stuff. Right. And then on that, set those points up on your paper and just beautifully draw what you see in front of you. With the paper behind, you're tr drawing it on the glass with a dry erase marker, okay? And take okay, your paper okay. away and see how you're doing. See how you just did. And that'll and, give you a read, uh, give you a more objective read on how you're doing seeing truth in front of you, seeing, seeing what okay. things really look like. So mess with that a little bit, okay? That's the advice of the self-taught guy, Anson Cross, too. He has these little kids doing it. And if you read the, re if the reports are true, and it sounds like they are, these kids go from, and he has examples in one of the books. He has three or four books out, so you could dig up his stuff, and you'd find them for almost nothing okay. online. But well, I'm gonna uh, go for the ones you recommend first. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you that list at the end of this. Yeah. Um, but he, but he puts those, he puts the kids in the position of having to make chairs with legs and stuff, you know. And they're so wildly out of perspective. They're as goofy. Does he make a chair or draw and paint. No, a chair? I apologize. They're draw, <laughs> he's drawing a chair. Yes, draw to, a chair. to draw to to draw the shape of a chair, right? And they sit down. They get it all screwy. They trace on the glass for a while, or they draw it again and then look through the glass. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And this whole yeah. thing between the several of them, that's the beginning of seeing two dimensionally. And you'll think you're drawing things pretty good, but there you'll feel there's something just wrong. And it's the two dimensionality right. part that takes a little while. That's a thing you have to learn about, and then you have to learn how to, how to, how to, 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 to perceive it as it were already painted. Do you see what I'm saying? That's a pretty big, that's a pretty big okay. uh, recipe. Yeah. So that's an area I should look to study in is the, two-dimensional absolutely try to see we, things dimensional yeah it's an odd thing to say isn't it since, since i tell you to go draw from life but i'm telling you to yeah. not to stop drawing two to three-dimensionally you can't draw well, paper's only two-dimensional yeah. so yeah yes my measure to that i thought i drew better from life was i was having a lot of trouble getting likenesses drawing from uh trying to copy a uh like a magazine or something yeah yeah and from life i was able to draw my wife and my partner at work and I got the likeness, and it was pretty decent drawing. So you felt better about those than a photograph. Well, well, good. Keep it that way. <laughs> well, it, it I mean, looked, it looked it looked like them. Yeah, yeah. 
Absolutely. Well, we're we're talking about the Pardon. we're talking about the discipline of shape making. You see what right. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I get that. So there are ways in which you can make things plausibly like, and that's one of the things I really want to iterate to you and mm -hmm. repeat. And that is, you're trying to make a true likeness. That's the training of the <laughs> eye. That is the making of a true likeness. For example, if I just gave you nothing but a nice silhouette of me, say, and you can't make that shape, the gesture proportions, and the bump count on that thing. Well, that's what you're trying to learn to do. You know, you, you really right. want to you want to train yourself to be able to do that's that cool. that simple thing from the third dimension. But you do need okay. some some feedback, and the feedback is like famously that piece of glass, and you okay. begin to see how how you haven't figured out you're not still not seeing right. You still most people will if they see a, a bunch of things happening between the nose and the cheek, they'll make the mm -hmm. space too big. They'll start fitting it in. They'll draw from left to right, putting all this I junk in. Yeah, that and you get over there, and it'll be too big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, my that... wife's got a good back for that stuff. She'll be like, the, the mouth's too far away from the nose. Well, she you see, that, that, that that's a good uh, layman's view, by the way. She has no pretensions about being a painter at all, but she can see no. that. She's what you need. If you have nothing else, use an honest person. Just somebody who yeah. just comes in the room and says, that looks funny right here. And that's all you need. Yeah. You don't I want somebody to give you theories. You don't want somebody to, and that's what's so going to happen in a lot of these videos. You're getting other people's stuff, and you got to watch we out for it. We watching a movie, and, yeah. one, and there's an actor from a different movie, but right. they're dressed differently with a wig, right. and you don't know it's them. Yeah. He's, she's like 100 for 100. <laughs> she knows, like, she's so good with faces. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I use her. She's my tool. That's my good. My secret weapon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but, but don't let her think she's smart. No. <laughs> she's just, she's got a certain awareness that's useful to you. But when they start thinking they're smarter than you, then they start, and I don't mean women. I don't mean women, but I mean people in general. When you have you use somebody yeah. for a critique, they suddenly start puffing up a little bit. What you need is they're oh, yeah. just their simple honesty. Just give me your reaction and get out of the way. <laughs> I have people sometimes helping other students of mine, some of my long-term students. And yeah. I have to tell them to stop doing this thing. Don't start teaching people. Just tell they're them, just tell them it's a little wider here, I think. You know, it's a little, the heights of width is a little wrong over there. And that's enough and leave. Just tell them that's what you're, <laughs> that's the first thing you see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's all you need. And a lay person can deliver that for you. But yeah, so between those, if you can just focus on drawing for the year and remember to, you know, um, keep on looking at work, keep on educating yourself. You know, I think that's I'll stop I this. I'm, not, I'm gonna put these lists out there for you, but I'm not going to go into this tonight. I mean, it'll be another hour of video in the first place. But I'm going to put them out so people can see them and so you can see them. And I'm going to I'll stay there for a minute and I'll come back to you. But I'm going to show these okay. to everybody right now. I'm going to um, write them down. I might just take a picture. Okay. So this is your question that you put to me. And I'm saying this to you guys, the video viewers out there, and you as well, uh, Michael. This is what you wrote to me. So that it had to go. it had to go to two iterations. This is page two. And I'm doing this <laughs> fast. Don't expect to read it now. Yeah. You can just pause Sorry it. Sorry about that. Yeah, you could no, no. And I'm not answering all these questions, by the way. I'm not answering them all because we, we I found it, I'm really way more, I, in fact, I'm being frustrated with myself for not having anybody standing in front of me. One of the reasons you're here is I, I, I feel you can get more juice out of me. You know what I mean? In a real conversation. And I find myself sort of cloning <laughs> myself in these, just well, looking at a camera. Oh, I feel horrible. So, okay, now I, I got to skip that it one. It was definitely Sorry. nice to have somebody at ask questions to and trust the answers I get. Well, you know, you trust, but verify, right? So you're going to work on this stuff. You're going to try to work it well, out. You're already verified. <laughs> well, I don't want to be. I want you to prove I'm right or wrong. <laughs> I will. Get back to me. Yeah. So this is the list of things. Um, I'm just going to give a brief run of it, but the knowledge gathered up and handed down. Don't ever underestimate. You started asking about um, uh, who, do you, who should you listen to or whether you can self-teach. Mm. There's a world of knowledge out here. Don't ever underestimate that, okay? There's Absolutely. a world of knowledge. So I try even to though, work. and these guys will cross, they'll, they'll give you, they'll show you where all the bridges are through all these, so you don't go down into the canyon for about a week. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so yeah. you want the back, the history. And the, and the, the hand-me-down is, you know, so you need to find somebody who actually is, is using it well, like a good painter. You know what I mean? But, but so the whole thing is a, is a, is a, process of long development and then passing it on and the next person takes it and makes more of it. You've seen that. So I'm just saying, don't ever underestimate teachers that have information. 
But so, but I'm saying all these things about choosing a teacher. I'm not going to do it right now, but we can come back to this, and I might just grab it one day, maybe in the next video. But choosing a teacher and the process you use is just no, not not him. Look at his work. No, don't 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 listen to him. You know, <laughs> or look yeah. at his students' work. Don't listen to him. Uh, and by the way, I talk about the inevitable shallowness of these choices of teachers because you're you're too dumb, so to speak. You, you said the reason you're confused is you can't tell the difference between one and the other. I used to love I Renoir. That. I mean, I I was that guy. So, <laughs> and by the way, I don't just I don't hate Renoir either. I don't mean to say that in a funny in a bad way, but he's not he's not that guy. He's not the millionaire the gamble said to borrow from. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but look at the teachers and the students' work. Uh, so here, a pig and a poke. Every time you pick a teacher, or even someone like me, it's a first shot at this. But so play yeah. this out for a year. You're not going to lose too much time in a year if you can play it right. out. Between you and me, we're going to figure out this can even be done. And not just you and me, but a lot of people out there. Whether right. this can even be done vicariously like this. Well, I'm going to give it my best shot. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Six is trust your instincts, your, internal, your sense of the self-evident. You know, That's why I say when you look at paintings to see which who to study with, how smart are you? You just yeah. you just look at this and you look at that and you say, no, I think this one's better. I didn't have anything better than that when I chose Brackman. <laughs> I had nothing better than that. I was dumb as a rock, right? <laughs> so yeah. Your brains come with with, with time. So, you but don't, look you at don't know what you don't know. That's right. Look at lots of work, past and present. Um, uh, by the way, I'm going to put out a thing from Gamel. Ask me for it, okay? It's called okay. It's called uh, 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 Art in Search of a Criterion. Art in Search of a Criterion. Yeah, a Criterion. Yeah. And it's a really, really important thing. And painters talk about why you're painting frequently and the whole nature of this thing. It's very important for you to get that in your head as you're starting to make decisions, right? Okay. So keep looking. Look at a lot of painters. Look at painting from a past time or all the way through. And and be look at everything. But don't assume everything is equal, <laughs> okay? So that, yeah. Argent, and then there's everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> you you do live there. I mean, a lot of people live there. It's fair enough. It's a good place to yeah. start. It's not a, is that nothing like a, it's not a bad place to start at all. I, uh, I like Norman Rockwell a lot too. Yeah, I, 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 his, I, I, and his paintings in person are amazing. Yeah, his paintings. Uh, and then he got into the photography stuff, and I, th I think it went sideways too much. I think it began to be yeah. unpleasant. It's not becoming uninteresting to me. You know, this is a craft. You've got to remember this is a craft. And if you understand this is a craft, it means a thing that we make with our hands. And a photograph ain't that. Right. You trace a photograph, I, and the the camera's already done all the work. You know, I don't care what it is, but that just eliminates one aspect of our craft. And so yeah. I, that's it hurt him. It hurt him in my eyes, and I wasn't even picking on him. I had no attitude problem. <laughs> um, so on the spot critiques from life. That's your that's your wife. But the other part of my point with that was you you do need that at some point. Um, because you need to stay honest. And to the extent I, your wife yeah. can do that for you, it'll, well, I, I let's just see how it works out. I want the truth. Yeah. You know? No. You want somebody who, who doesn't have an angle, isn't trying to teach you anything. Just somebody right. who's going to look at your work, just walk into the room and look at your work with nature in front of you and say, it isn't like it here. It isn't like it there. Can you not see that? It's good enough my, for now. Yeah. My worst stuff, I crumble up and throw away anyway. So don't I always do that. I recommend you put dates on them instead of throwing them away. Put them in a file cabinet with dates. Well, because if you're actually learning anything from me, you can't prove it. You've thrown away all your stuff. I, at one point, the reason I say that is, at one point, a gamble said, Are you, I said to Gamble, I said, I, am I making any progress? He said, line your stuff up on the wall in chronological order, and you can answer your own question. You, you can't do it if you throw everything in the trash. But it also makes you do things with less um, uh, of an edge. You know what I mean? You won't give as much commitment to it if you know you're just going to throw it away. So plan, yeah. plan to keep it, and you don't want to be ashamed of your work. So make sure you get to give it your best shot. I'm not ashamed of it. No, no, I, not in me in that way though. Yeah. I know I'm no Monet, you know. So. No, but lots of failure is the way you get to good stuff. So you know, what I mean, lots of, of trial and error. You know, error, I error, and error. I like to say about my own background. Anyway, look at the rest of this list. You can see what kinds of stuff I would bring up. If you have any of you out there, or or um, or Michael, have any other. This doesn't show up. Oh, it does, this doesn't show up to you, but it will when you look at the video. Oh, okay. okay. All right. So then I'm going to show you the, this is the list of books. So Art in Search of a Criterion is from Gamble. It's an essay. But Drawing and Painting Self-Taught by Anson Cross. The Science and Drawing and Art by Amy Moore. Uh, the Science of Appearances by Max Meldrum. And Kenyon Cox or Joshua Reynolds. A lot of people. What I recommend you do, Michael, and I'll end with this, that you read everybody. Don't believe anybody. 
Just start mm -hmm. reading and just listen. And, and what you're going to be looking for is the common threads, the thing right. that they have in common. Listen, listen, because the important stuff everybody buys into. And at some point, they're, 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 they're gradually making that a permanent part of your understanding by the, rep, by the sheer repetition, the fact that they all agree. Right. So read a lot of stuff. Don't pick sides, anything like that. Just read stuff. And I mean, pick sides in the sense in the beginning. Don't look at stuff that doesn't you're not impressed with. <laughs> but but well, let's let's leave it at that, Michael. And I just want to thank you. This has been I pretty want to cool. Thank you too. Yeah, yeah. I this wish you well. Yeah. For me. Yeah. Get back to me. Let's see how this works out. I'm hoping this works with my uh, with my uh, Mr. Producer. And uh, <laughs> if it works out, we'll have all sorts of people knocking at the door. And uh, but you may have to get back in line again or something. But. I look forward to right. seeing what you do over the course of six and nine and eight months in a year. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll stay in touch. Yeah, great. Best to you, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks Have for doing night. this. Yeah, good night.